So thank you so much for hanging until the last talk of the day. So uh, we've been playing with these um, yellow mouth barracuda out in the Azores. Uh, very interesting animals, very hard to deal with. So I'll let you know a few details about what we've been doing out there. Uh, so we, we always start with a little bit of uh, homework. Uh, we went on fish base and there's a, a lot of barracuda, as you all know. The most famous being the, the great barracuda, Spiraena barracuda, which most of you have in your tanks. And then we've got the Spiraena viridensis, the yellow mouth barracuda, uh, somewhat common in the middle of the Atlantic, in the Azores. And uh, we, we thought, well, let's, let's give these guys a try, see what happens. So this talk will basically cover capture, holding, and transport. Uh, again, a little bit of homework, what do they feed on, and uh, what's their behavior, their reproduction, and all those things. We're pleasantly surprised to find out that some colleagues of ours from the University of the Azores have actually done some, uh, some scientific work with them. So, you know, it was nice to ask these guys out for beers and to get their opinion on, you know, how should we handle these things and all. So that was cool. And then the time came to actually start preparing the equipment. Uh, now, Rui, Rui Gedish, I, I know you guys have trouble rolling your R's, so I like to overdo it just to make you feel bad. <laughs> So Rui is sitting right there, uh, actually coordinated the whole process. And uh, we started out by preparing this uh, really cool knotless mesh, which of course I don't need to tell you is, is absolutely critical. When you're dealing with really sensitive animals, you gotta have this really smooth material. Uh, for nets, we used uh, these rubber scoop nets. Again, no knots, no nothing. Obviously they're rubber, so very, very smooth materials to handle these things, latex gloves all the time, you know, pretty much standard stuff. Uh, we always start every operation with, uh, with a briefing. Um, Rui is extremely uh, particular about that. This guy is absolutely amazing. This is his first time um, at draw. I would urge you to, to really pick his brain this evening because um, really he does a phenomenal job out there in the Azores. I only go out there maybe once or twice a year and Rui is really is doing a kick-ass job at making sure everything goes very, very smoothly. So preparation really is everything. Now, this, this is quite unnatural for us Portuguese, uh, being you know, forced to work slow and in, in calm. It's just not us. So everybody is inside, we're very stressed, but outside it, we're very zen. Uh, so this, um, it's quite unusual for us, but we succeeded. So we worked very, very slow, because you don't want to scare these things. Because if you act too sudden, as we sometimes do, uh, they just rush into the net and then they get trapped and it's no good. So working very, very slowly, um, we basically very, very slowly trap these things with, with our rubber scoop nets and we put them inside these big buckets. And then we slowly move them back to our holding station. Uh, once in, uh, at the holding station, uh, it took us a while to figure out what to feed them. They, didn't r they weren't really initially feeding on the dead food they were supposed to eat that we had studied in the, um, in the scientific literature. But we found out that, you know, uh, uh, some miscellaneous dead fish and the live smelt really got them, you know, got their senses going. So by providing the live fish, that got them to feed on the dead stuff as well. So that was nice. Now this, this is really cool. We, we kind of stumbled upon this by accident, to be, to be honest. We, started playing with betadine a couple of years ago uh, as a, um, um, a treatment for skin lesions, that sort of thing. We had such amazing results. We started playing with this with, the, with our um, pilot fish, with the Naucrates, that we're now using this as a prophylactic treatment. And, uh, and um, dosages uh, is, you know, as you can see there, we do a milliliter per 100 liters in uh, 48 hours, then we let the animals rest for 24, then we do another 24 hour treatment, and we actually repeat this cycle three times. And we do this in the actual tank where the animals are. So that, needs, that means you need to flush the water with clean water to, you know, to, to complete the cycle. And we've seen some amazing results. I mean, um, wounds, very deep, um, nasty looking wounds on their skin, that stuff just clears away with good old fashioned betadine that you get off the counter at a Walgreens or, or something. So this is working really well. Uh, they don't really like um, sudden light changes. So whenever we, we have to handle them, whenever we need to 
pack them or unpack them, we always advise our clients to do it in a very uh, dark environment with a red light. I, I was debating what photo to put here when I decided to talk about red lights. And uh, I didn't want to scare you nice people, so I went with the skeletons. <laughs> we feed them every three or four days. Uh, we also found out kind of the hard way that they, uh, they fight a lot. So it's important to start with really large chunks of food so that the, the, the fiercest and the largest animals get busy on those and they basically get a little distracted with the large chunks of food. They work those up until we actually then start throwing regular sized food so for the smaller animals to play with it. And we throw a lot of food. It, it, uh, it takes a really heavy toll on our filtration system, but we found out that it's really the only way for them not to attack each other, is just to throw insane amounts of food so that they, they're all busy, they don't really harm each other. And then of course, when the time comes to do a transport, we run trials, we run many, many, many trials. Again, Rui is the mind behind the whole um, um, experimental design on these. So we prepare some transport boxes and we have this airline so that we can collect some water throughout time and we analyze this transport water and then we do our charts and we s test multiple scenarios we look at dissolved oxygen over time with uh, different times of fasting or with no fasting with or without betadine diff and, um, and multiple things with or without amquel and of course we find out that you know with fasting with betadine and uh, with ice, in fact, by lowering ring temperature, we get better results and better dissolved oxygen over time. We also look at pH, and uh, pretty much as you would expect, you know, you, you add ice, uh, you add more time of fasting, you add amquel, of course, and uh, betadine, um, bicarbonate and, um, and carbonate, and you get a higher pH at the end of time. And then the time came to actually uh, yeah, Rui does uh, uh, rule. Um, we, we prepared an actual transport, and our very first was, was actually very nice. It was to the Oceanario in Lisbon, so that, that's an easy transport. We're out in, um, in Orta, in the middle of the, the Atlantic, so that's like a total of a 13-hour transport. Um, we tested everything, and you can see we have a very thorough table, where including the time of oxygen addition. We actually timed that to, to have the exact volume that we, we want to have in the bag. We, have, we like to think that we have absolute control o over every single variable that can be controlled. Uh, so again, uh, and the other thing is that I forgot to mention before, we use these very stiff black bags inside which the actual transport bag goes. And that black bag basically, well, it, it gives mechanical resistance to the whole thing. It, it makes it hard, it makes it harder to, to break, you know what I mean? And it also helps the, the Barracuda to basically um, chill and to just be calmer because the, the blackness, of course, makes the, for a more um, docile environment. So that's just um, an enlargement of, the, um, of what we do. We use really large bags and uh, all of the detail out there and we use some betadine in transport. We have found out that um, it works really well if we do the one milliliter per 100 liters, so 10 milliliters per cubic meter, that works really well. And that's the detail right there. I have a quick video of the process of catching them. You'll see, it's again, it's very un-Portuguese because everybody's moving so slow and, and calm. Uh, so that's the Barracuda in the holding tank. And uh, one of our guys is gonna get in the water and very slowly it's just gonna gently nudge them one at a time into this plastic bag that has a plastic rim to keep it open. There's gonna be some underwater footage in just a second. Ah, there we go. And now one just gently <laughs> swims inside, that's it. And then, now as he ends the bag to Rui and the rest of the crew, we actually drain the water from that bag. We wanna make sure that the water in the transport bag is 100% new, and we, we, we drained, I'd say, 95% of that bag water just so we don't get any, any um, dirty gunk into the transport bag. And we're nearly done. You, yeah, there we go. So 
you know our website in, in, in. so efficiency is another thing we like to think we're we're pretty good at uh, so we consolidate these all these shipments because we're in the middle of the Azores uh, well there, there's no direct flight from the Azores anywhere really so everything has to fly to Lisbon and then from Lisbon somewhere else and there's actually very few direct flights from Lisbon anywhere else in the world so there's quite a few stops yeah so that that forces us to really uh, think about how we're going to do things and uh, and we consolidate all these shipments like the big boxes you see in the middle those are the actual barracuda the smaller boxes are other things going to other clients and we have to look at flight schedules and we have to make sure there's enough uh, layover time because of course for cargo you need at least four or five hours so these are all different things we have to factor in when we processing these shipments so the, that first batch that traveled to the Oceanario, we had a 100% survival. Well, in all fairness, we really weren't expecting anything else. We had done our trials. It was a short enough trip, so we weren't really expecting any mortalities. And then we got an order for, from the Livorno Aquarium, an aquarium in, uh, in Italy that's kind of close to Milan, give or take. And this was going to be a 24 to 28 hour uh, journey. So. Again, we ran some mock transports. We decided what we wanted to do. We figured this was fi the 15th of July last year, uh, very, very warm in Portugal, in Italy as well. So we added um, a lot of ice. We added more bicarb and carb um, that we did before just to make sure that water is going to be you know, adequate. There's some detail on the time. Now, this, this did not go 100% uh, well. We, we lost one animal out of the 40. We had a couple of other animals that were kind of turned upside down. They eventually recovered, but we weren't really satisfied with this. And that really drove us to think that, well, we're, we're nearly there, but there's, there's certainly some room for improvement. We haven't received any orders after this one, but, uh, but certainly when we do, we're going to have to look at this again, especially for these longer uh, transports and see if we can improve some of these multiple variables we're playing with. Um, another cool thing, just very quickly, we have um, uh, a couple of students of mine, they're doing their senior thesis on, hor on um, uh, stress tr uh, in transport. They're looking at hormonal levels before, during, and after the transport, so that we're expecting some cool results. And that should be out published in just a few months. And, uh, and that, that's pretty much it. So these are extremely delicate animals super super sensitive you really don't want to forget your latex gloves it's kind of like working with pilot fish or even with mackerel with scomber uh, years and years ago um alan and and mark and i would come to you and, uh, and present on dealing with scomber back at the oceanario before opening and that now just seems so so easy but working with these guys certainly reminded us of what it was like to work with mackerel at the beginning because they were just they're so delicate uh, the betadine looks really cool, and of course, carb, bicarb, amquel, all of that stuff makes a huge difference in water quality. And 24 hour really seems to be our limit as far as 100% survivability, so there's really some room for improvement there. And I'd like to thank you again for your attention and the RAW program committee for allowing us to come and present to you guys. Thank you so much.